So in this video, we're going to take a look at occupant loads and how to calculate them in a building. So first off, um, what are occupant loads? Occupant loads are basically um, a design quantity of people in the building. And what do we use them for? Um, primarily life, safe, life safety elements. So, um, you know, you, you kind of have to have a sense of how many people are in a space or on a floor plate to to design adequate life safety. So um, as an example of that, the, the, the total accumulative width of egress doors from a suite would be based off occupant load. The width of a corridor would be based off occupant load. The width of um, exit stairs would be based off occupant load. The width of an exit is based off occupant load and so on and so forth. So those, you know, all the life safety parameters of the building or many of them are based off the occupant load. Um, calculation results. Um, as well, um, if you have public washrooms, um, you know, you have to obviously design your washrooms to to meet the required um, load that they're going to be used for. So um, occupant loads are also used to calculate how many fixtures you need in a washroom. So in the code, we are just going to jump um, in section 3.1 and we're going to scroll on down to 3.1.17.1 occupant load right here. And so really the, you know, it's pretty straightforward um, approach to this. So, um, you know, if, if you, we, we talked about occupancy groups in a different video. So basically there's a chart here broken down by occupancy groups. So, you know, your A, your A are, are assemblies and, and your Bs are the care and treatment and um, Cs are residential and Ds are business and personal services and Es are mercantile. And there's more on the next page here. You got industrial and just some other other uses um, that might not be so obvious under a group. And so really all you do here is um, in most instances, so we'll take a look at these sentences up here, but in most inst instances you just say, okay, well, I've got an office, for example, you figure out your office area and you divide that office area by 9.3 and that's how many people you have. So if you have 200 square meter office, for example, divide 200 by 9.3 and you would get 21.5 people. So you obviously can't have a 0.5 person, so you would just round that up to 22 people would be in that office space. And then with that number, you could figure out um, right off the bat, if that's just an office suite, say in a, in a shared um, floor scenario where there's multiple suites, then you could just use that number to figure out um, the required egress door width from that suite. And it's really that quite simple for figuring out your occupant loads. Some other sentences here I'll just draw your attention to for the assembly uses you know there's a lot of examples here for assembly uses if you have a space with fixed seats that area per person tells you to read sentence one so if you go there it just tells you it's, the occupant load is based on the number of seats that are fixed so if you have 200 seats you got 200 people um, if you're uh, doing some residential work and, um, you know, so the residential is basically two persons per sleeping room in a dwelling unit. So if you were doing like a condo building, um, if you had a, a two bedroom dwelling unit, there'd be the occupant load would be four people in that case. And so when you calculate these numbers, these occupant load numbers, you, from a life safety standpoint, you really want to consider the, um, the, a worst case scenario, I, I guess. So, you know, if you have a gymnasium, for example, gymnasiums often uh, might be used for um, weddings or something like that. So maybe you, you should be looking at that as a space with non-fixed seats and designing that space. So the egress doors from that space and, and, the, and the access to exits and the exits and so on and so forth, you know, based on um, kind of the worst case scenario of what that space might be used for. Uh, another example of that would be if we go down to mercantile uses, you know, like if you looked at a, a mercantile use, typically like if you had a shoe store or something like that, you, you know, there's a back house area. So for calculating the occupant load of the, of the, the shoe store, the public area, you, you might use 3.7. Um, but you could say, well, the, the back of house is 20% of the area, and I'm going to take that area for storage, and you'll see by, you know, you're dividing that by 46, so your occupant load is going to be way less. You, you could do that for certain scenarios, like um, for figuring out the amount of washroom fixtures required for that tenant, um, because that's the reality of what it is. But from a base building standpoint, um, 
you know, overall design of the building. Uh, you wouldn't want to do that. You just want to say, well, I'm going to assume that entire area is the 3.7 so that you have ultimate flexibility um, for the future of the building and it's designed for that worst case scenario. Now on that note, when, when you're um, figuring out occupant loads, you do want to take it on a per, per space um, basis and then a per floor basis is, is generally the way you would approach it. So for example here, if we look at this floor plate right here, this might be a, say an office use right there. Maybe that's, or maybe it's dentist or something like that, which would be a group D. Um, maybe over here, uh, this space right here is, um, yeah, let's just say it's, maybe it's a group D as well. Maybe these are A2s though, for some reason. Okay, maybe there's some classrooms up there or something like that. So, you know, when you figure out the occupant loads, you'd figure out per space. So you would say, okay, like group D, take the, take the area of that space. And let's just say you end up with 100 people. Then you would base your egress door widths, okay, your egress points. Maybe you need two in this case, but whatever the case, um, if, you, if, you, um, if, if you figure out you have 100 people, basically you use that number to figure out your cumulative width of your egress doors. Same for the next space over here. Um, and then you'd figure out based on the group type what the occupant loads are here. So, you know, in A2, you'd end up with a much bigger result. Basically, it's a smaller space, but you might end up with 100 people there, for example, just, just as a, as a fictionary um, uh, situation. So you figure it out per space, and then you can figure out your, your required egress from each one of those spaces. And then you would add them together. So let's just say we had, let me just clean this up a little bit. So let's just say you have, um, yeah, 100 people here, 100 people here, 50 people, 50 people, 50 people, and 50 people. So now you would look at it from an entire floor standpoint and say, well, I've got um, one, two, three, 400 people here. So this, this floor has 400 people. And now you would use that number to calculate the corridor width. Okay, you'd use that number to calculate your stair widths. You would use that number to calculate if they're having shared washrooms, um, how many fixtures are required in the washrooms. Um, and I, I guess that's pretty much it at that point. So you, anyways, so the point is take it from a, a per suite use space and then um, take it to, you know, then add them together and have your, um, your look at it from a per floor standpoint. And so now let's just look at a main floor scenario and let's just say you had a, a, um, a, a retail use in that, you know, it's a strip mall scenario in that tenant space and you have an A2 um, use in there. And you got a D use in that space and then you've got another retail space there. So in this case, let's just say there's no shared washroom. So each tenant's gonna provide their own washrooms. So what you could do in that case is if this E, if you knew that this space, say, had um, that much area of storage area, if you knew what it was going to be, you would you would say that okay, that's going to be that's going to be storage area, and you go to the you would go to your um, your calculation for storage area, and you divide it by for that area by forty six, and you'd figure out how many people you have there, and then the remainder of that area you would um, calculate based on, in that case, mercantile first story 3.7. Okay, and then you could use that number now to figure out how many washrooms this space actually needs, how many fixtures they need um, in each washroom, basically. What you wouldn't want to do is use that um, method to calculate your exit width. So maybe there's a double door at the front and maybe there's a single door at the back. Um, you would be best served for life safety calculations to assume that 100% of that space right there is going to be retail and use 3.7 so that when you um, calculate, you know, based on occupant load, when you calculate your required um, exit accumulative width, you make sure you have enough for that worst case scenario. So that's kind of um, how that works. But but certainly for each one of these spaces, if they were doing their own washrooms, um, you know, when they do their tenant fit out, then you, you could break it down 
even internally within that space, um, the, 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 the portion um, of that space being used. And the key language um, in here is the occupant load um, of a floor area or part thereof, basically what the part thereof is being designed for. So that's why you could break it down, but very cautionary note to do that from a, a base building um, design standpoint for life safety items. And, you know, so when you look at, um, you know, some, some buildings and start walking around and paying attention to things, uh, you know, you'll notice, like, for example, here, this is the convention center, and, and the convention center um, is on the second floor. So if you're on the second floor, there's a really wide stair that um, comes down from this building, like the stairs is this this wide. So if you were to go in those doors, it's the big, wide stairs taking you up to the second floor. That number of doors you see there, one, two, three, four, that is based um, on the amount of occupant load in that space. Now, now people are going to various exits in this situation, so there would be other exits as well. But you would, you would base, um, you know, the accumulative width of all the exits would have to add up to that requirement um, based on occupant load. So the reason that exit, like nobody even uses that, like it's just it's just for an emergency. Like you don't go in that door ever. It's just there for an emergency when people got to get out of there fast. And, but that total width is um, based basically on a portion of that occupant load in this case. You know, same thing for um, corridor widths. You know, if you're in certain buildings, like schools, for example, um, there's classrooms, so they, they have, tend to have higher occupant loads in some cases than, than offices, say. And, you know, your corridors end up getting wider. And that basically sums up uh, how to calculate an occupant load.